Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Uh, Parth's feeling a little under the weather, so I'm not sure if he's gonna uh, make it today. And also, I'll be in and out because uh, we just got a new MDM solution here. Uh, you know, like one of those managed device agents, and uh, and it has logged. I registered uh, just now, and it has logged me out of ninety percent of my stuff. So I'm going to be spending a bunch of time relogging into all my various accounts. Wait, what does what's what's a MDM agent? Oh, you know, a managed device <laughs> or multiple device man something device manager. <laughs> like um, like. You you know, it's a thing just like that's on your, you know, uh, to make sure that like if somebody steals your laptop, we can wipe it or or, uh, uh, you know, if uh, you obviously downloaded something from a malware website like, oh, block the site for, you know, block that uh, MacBook from, you know, connecting to our, our uh, internal network or whatever it is. Oh, uh, yeah. The thing that makes my computer go. Mm. We can't yeah. toaster. <laughs> you should make yeah anyway <laughs> uh okay this has been a, a minute more it seems like a light day and looks like people have to go so yep maybe i'll keep the agenda light oh well of the the issues is wrong Puff, although I can probably talk to one of them. Oh, uh, do I still have the, the, the Google Beats meeting up? That's not deleted. Oh. <laughs> All right, we should talk about that as well. <clears throat> okay, I guess let's get started. Um, usual code of conduct um, warning. This is an OpenSSF uh, meeting governed by OpenSSF uh, code of conduct and other code of conduct, also by antitrust policy and law, um, as well as meetings being recorded. Cool. Um, all right, I can start for today's meeting. Um, it looks like there's a couple items that path within. Um, the social community meeting on Thursday, which we probably should bring some a little bit about. Uh, other than that, any other topics that people want to bring up? So I just copied those ones from Parth from the last meeting. Um, okay. Because they were like the at the bottom that weren't that we didn't get to. So. Okay. Um, maybe that's how we community meeting since some folks have to drop off. Um, based on the current agenda that I'm looking at, there's um, Ben wants to do an update on some of the changes that he's making to the uh, the meeting recordings as well as the the blocks on the on the, uh, the landing page um and also his uh, proposal to to uh, make changes to the contributor letter um any anything that we want to chat about in the next community meeting I know 1.0 has been something that we've been talking about. Do we want to bring that up as feedback? Um, just get our thoughts on on 1.0. Do you think that's something that we want to do, or do we want to flesh it out and get people to work on that instead?
I think we kind of talked about one oh enough <laughs> in the last okay. one. <laughs> Awesome. Um, anything new that we can demo from last time? Last time we showed the block analyze stuff. Um, do you wanna <clears throat> you want demo? Maybe we can demo paths um addition on like the instant vulnerability scanning thing. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, do we want so I mean, that that whole area is, is kind of a focus on, you know, the future of the C sub type of area. And, you know, like, are we going to use a, a pub sub there, or re, you know, re-architect it? Is that something we want to bring up in the community meeting, like asking for help, or is that just, just don't worry about it for now? I think Gav having the demo will, will will kind of evoke some questions on like what's the use case of it. I think I was, I was talking to 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 Pop about this. So it's kind of like one of the discussions that we were having is like, should this be a client side hint? It's like not everything needs to go should like instantly have uh, so super so contacts for, for others on the call that, that are not aware of what this work. Basically, uh, this change um, has it so that the ingester calls. Um, so if you ingest an S bomb or ingest any document. It'll take the identifier strings and also call OSB if that pulls, and then it will ingest the vulnerabilities at that point. So the idea is like, once you ingest a S bomb, you don't have to wait for like the certifier to run, which may may take the amount of time that that you're not sure of. There's no way to check on it today. So the idea is that we run the we we call out to OSB. Um, <clears throat> OSV currently, and then kind of ingest the vulnerabilities during the ing ingestion stage. So the ingestion becomes longer, but you get some instant response or instant metadata on the vulnerabilities as well. Um, okay, Pa. So I, I'm not sure. Do do we have an idea on what that pops up um, for C sub will look like yet? Oh, this is some. I feel like we should have a design talk somewhere. Yeah, we don't at all. That's what that's what I'm saying. Like, are we are we using the community meeting to like call for people to help design, or just uh, we don't expect that <laughs> they should come to this meeting. I feel like that's more my personal take is that's more of a this meeting. <laughs> yeah. I mean not to be done there, but you know, just to call out that this is something that the maintainers are looking to to okay. tackle soon. Um so I, I added a bullet point, so I'm editing the community meeting now. So I added a bullet point to mention the pop up idea as well to get a feedback. Yeah. Um and then yeah. Well, to get feedback and also to get people to join this call to talk about it if they're interested. Yeah, I'm happy to do like a, a diagram slide or something or to kind of show like <clears throat> what the current situation is for um, the collectors versus the certifiers and what the uh, the change is and kind of what we're what the problem is that we're facing. Awesome. Um, Nasa? Yeah, just a thought. Maybe um, when talking or designing node uh, C sub, pub sub, or something like that, uh, node deletion can be part of that thinking so that, uh, you know, the data just doesn't keep growing forever. Um, 
I don't know if it has to be, but I feel like they kind of go together, or they maybe could. I don't know if they do either, but um, maybe it makes sense to just have like a a uh, recurring topic of the community meeting to be just like, what are the maintainers working on? <laughs> so not just completed like demos, you know? I like, I like that a lot. I just pasted in chat the release notes for 07 now. <clears throat> how was the um, um, how was the process of the release? How do you... oh, we didn't follow it at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. There's no issues. Okay. Okay. So, I think we have quite a bit on the on the community meeting. I think we should be good. We have the version announcement, updates to the landing page and YouTube channel, uh, contributor stuff, paths work. Um, I think if we have time, we can maybe mention the 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 issue around Golang that Puff and I are running into, um, and I can talk a little bit about that. But um, let me just add that on. Okay, sounds good. Um, any other thoughts on community meeting? I think we we have we have a, a good amount of topics. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I, I added uh, a, a topic, um, but want to get the other, anything else out of the way first. Okay. Um, pa, since you're on, I know you have a couple of outstanding things, but I know you're also not feeling that well. Do you want to discuss some of these things today or not, not quite? <laughs> I, mean, I don't have I don't have it open in front of me. So what what was some of that stuff? So one is the the delete the deletion of notes discussion, um, and then the handler include a handler for second DX virtual ranges. Yeah, I'm even wait on those. It's fine. Okay, nothing nothing crazy. Sounds good. Um, I can talk a little bit about the depths of depth issue. Um. And also, I can share a little bit on at least like what's going on there. Um, cool. Any any final takers on community meeting? If not, I'll skip ahead. Cool. Um, so we ran into this weird issue with the so the where. I think Path was looking at using upgrading to the new V3 Alpha, which supports like pull queries. Um, but we weren't able to actually get the right data out of it. Um, so the specific example was and the runtime. Um, actually, let me just share my screen. Maybe easier to to, uh, to see this. Um, so basically, it's this package, right? It's like enter runtime go with a capital G, and this is this is where most of the the complications come in. Um, 
And the issue is that so in the previous version of Depths of Dev, the query was saying like give give me the the package name and then the package version and then the package name expected like you know uh ecosystem golang uh name is this and then version is this um <clears throat> now in the golang ecosystem this is like how it's identified right so the back of the package name package version um the weird thing is so in v3 alpha um they created uh, depth of depth created a pull um, endpoint. So by creating the pull endpoint, you can see I'm gonna give you a pull and then return the result. Now the issue around this comes in because um, pull. I think if I would try to try and synthesize like the, all the discussions. It boils down to two things in the critical path. One is that the pull spec expects all lowercase. So whenever you pass something into a pull, everything becomes lowercase. And so that's the first thing. And the second thing is that um, depths of depth, how they implement the API for pull is they take the pull, they extract the name, the ecosystem, and the version, and then call the original API. So what happens is pull makes this lowercase. It extracts basically the name. It queries the old API, but the old API expects a capital G because that's how the Golang def system defines how a package name is and that it's case sensitive. So there's no way for us to be able to use the Perl API to call it. Uh, it's also tricky because when we pass something using, like if we if we pass um, a a Perl technically that's produced by SBOM, and we use the Perl Golang library, it would lowercase this. Uh, and so we end up with a situation where we have two identifiers that are related in a way that like you lose information and they, they, they are kind of queried differently across different ecosystems. Um, so that's kind of the situation. And I think that's a combination of bad identifiers. Um, well, I think that's the, the root of the problem, but uh, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I think the root of it here, right, is um, this is like an issue with the Perl spec. Uh, the Perl spec doesn't get to say, hey, uh, we leave it up to individual um, package managers to, or, you know, ecosystems to define how they define packages and like, hey, that's that's on them. And then say, but we don't support lowercase. I mean, we don't support casing. Because if you don't support casing, then like you're pretty much saying, hey, go, you must be case insensitive, which that's obviously not not the intent. And it's also obviously not the uh, uh, not actually what's happening with Go. Um, and so if Go specifically has casing and does certain things with casing, the Perl spec needs to um, needs to support that or it's deficient like that's that's kind of my opinion on it right like there's that's separate from like a couple of other things of like are folks doing the right stuff um but like if for example here a new package ecosystem comes out and you have a and once again i don't think anybody would want to do this but you know you have something with like package foo that's lowercase and package foo that is uppercase and those are technically considered different packages in that ecosystem Perl would have <coughs> no way of uh delineating between them and in fact that could be like i i still think that you know obviously you wouldn't want a package ecosystem that that like those two things are technically different because that just leads to you know typo you know anyway um, yeah but, I... but but i do think that hey look at the end of the day though you need to have a way of being that specific, especially if, um, you know, folks are doing this already. Yeah, I was talking to Papa about like, oh, 
we're trying with different ecosystems so they can create two organizations with like a capital or a lot of case. Um, I think you can still type of spot with Go by by creating a module that's low. Like if, if I own the answer, I can create a one with lowercase Go and then two of them would map to the same thing. Um, but yeah, uh, Santiago. Uh, you're on mute if you're talking. Oh, I, sorry. Uh, I, I'm going to say the opposite. I think this is honestly uh, a mess because uh, in theory, if Perl is a subset of uh, RFC 39 something something, uh, like the URL, the, the URL RFC, and the URL RFC tells you that they need to be case insensitive, uh, then if they drop that requirement, then they're essentially making Perl like not be compliant with that RFC. Uh, at the same time, I'm a little bit surprised about Go being case sensitive because my understanding is that uh, if GitHub.com slash blah 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 is the is the is the package name, then they are also using an R, uh, a URL which is also case insensitive. Uh, you can copy paste that URL that you had right there in any uh, address bar, and it's going to turn it into into like the canonical name at some point. It's going to translate it um, because the HTTP server will see that address, and it's going to find the matching one with the right capitalization. So I don't know. I don't know what the solution is there. I agree that there needs to be some degree of opinionation. Uh, I wonder if really the the goal of Perl of being like a, a subset of this RFC is achievable at this point. Uh, if if, the, if there's if there's package ecosystems that use capitalization, then then yeah, you need to you need to break with the RFC. So my understanding of of that RFC was like certain like a, a ton of the elements are case insensitive, but certain things that are related to the data are case sensitive, and so I would consider this part of that. Or that if if let's say that is still sort of violating that part of the RFC, then I would say like certain things like you know all these things like uh, that could be case sensitive would be part of I don't know I don't know if the query element is is case uh, sensitive but i would say then it has to be part of that um and part of that's just like i'm i'm starting to wonder cuz like uh not every you know there's the practical like hey not every thing is going to be doing uh, i i feel like it's just going to cause a lot of issues because i i'm wondering now like if i look at maven for example um i know for uh i know in a lot of cases those things are um case, case insensitive but i don't know exactly if it's the package or just the file names like the jar names so yeah uh yeah i don't, i honestly I, I think there's ways to torture the rfc into making a Perl yeah. that actually complies better. Uh, I, <clears throat> I yeah, that you do wonder... the. Oh, I'm... oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, 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 so I was the... just going to say, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so, like, a, I, I guess my 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 point there would also be: is this is this a problem of like, do we need to pick up the Perl spec and? fix it and then have some maintainers of the Perl spec kind of say like, hey, yeah, this is okay. Or like, well, what is feasible in this regard? Because I, I agree that in a sense, the problem lies within the Perl spec and case sensitivity. Uh, tying packages to network names was always going to be a little messy. Uh, but I assume there's a way forward. As you're saying, Michael, you can you can say, oh, all of this case sensitive stuff moves out of the location into a query fragment of sorts, or we add some decorators to the spec that 
that say that this is uh, this is case sensitive. I don't know. I don't know what it, would it be, but I would assume that somewhere it should be encoded. That, uh, or or just say, hey, look, this looks like RFC blah blah blah, but it's not RFC blah blah blah. It's, uh, it's similar. Yeah. yeah um, I am reminded of uh, if anybody's ever had to build web servers or really any application that managed files on both Windows and Linux. Um, and I, I always blank on, on this. I think what like Linux is case sensitive and Windows is case insensitive or something like that. And so there's a lot of times like uh, even like Git repos that would um, just break between OSs because of, uh, hey, I had something with uppercase foo and lowercase foo and windows or whatever it is called you know saw them as being the same thing um but yeah i, I yeah i do wonder um like because at the end of the day right i do think that some of these things need to we need to have a path forward and i also think that like the the one concern i've i've had is the pearl folks have sort of pushed this is just from the community perspective um they they pushed back on changing it because of one is just like they view it as mostly finished. Um, I know on the front of uh, uh, Steve, he tends to be a little bit more blunt about like, oh, no, no, we did it everything right. Um, the other person, was it uh, Philippe? Yeah, yeah. So Philippe seems a bit more reasonable, but but also still seems like like they really don't want to to change much uh, here because they view sort of the Perl spec as mostly um, finished. But I I do wonder if, if we can kind of lean on that a little bit more and just say, okay, well, let's just assume for a second, if Perl is accurate, right? How should the Go ecosystem, like, you know, to what you just sort of put in uh, the there with the case insensitive uh, and case sensitive things there, Brendan, like maybe we just go to them and say, Hey, in the case of the go ecosystem, how would you recommend the go ecosystem manage this? If this is what, if this is how you're kind of looking to do and just kind of put it on them. And then, you know, they can go back and say, great, now we need to change the Perl library to now support this newer model of doing it or support. The yeah. I think I think that maybe this is an opportunity for us to 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 document it and maybe so like I've been talking to the the depth of depth team also and they're like yeah this is a pain point for them but they they haven't really adopted the pull spec because of the like that widely because of the go blank stuff um, and so like maybe it's some it's a place where we can say like oh let's let's co write a a blog post or a document with all these different users and then kind of see whether we can do anything with it. Jeff? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm trying to look at other examples here. Um, Python per PEP 508, uh, valid project names must consist only of ASCII letters, digits, underscores, hyper, hyphens, and or periods, and start and end with a ASCII letter or digit. Comparison of projects names is case insensitive and treats arbitrarily long runs of underscores, hyphens, and or periods as equal. For example, if you register a project named cool-stuff, users will be able to download it or declare it as a dependency using cool-stuff, cool-stuff, cool-underscore-stuff, or cool-underscore-underscore-dash-dot dash underscore underscore stuff uh, but uh what happens when you query depths dot dev for cool underscore 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 dash dot dash underscore stuff like but, is it going to match the right one because that's yeah. what that's what P python says is equivalent to the canonical one you know what i mean so like i think mm -hmm. i think Okay. And, and does the Perl spec say that uh, I've been those was are equivalent myself. pearls because <laughs> the upstream ecosystem considers them equivalent? You know, like, I don't know. 
<laughs> so, so you say like if I j this like uh, five pi simple, yeah, right? like you should be able and to put an underscore do... or an underscore and a dot. Yeah, so that's somebody could have that in their requirements.txt or whatever you know whatever it is now, and get the pi pi simple. Right. Yeah, they they did a bunch of little rules like that. Uh, I think to also avoid like hyper squatting. Yeah, and then yeah. they encoded that on the path. Yeah, so we have the same problem here. If like I, what do the Perl spec people say about this? Like, are those equivalent pearls? <laughs> like, if should you have one pearl resolved to the other by querying PyPI? Like, I don't. So uh, that's the other. Uh, my other understanding of this was like there is a table somewhere in the spec. That just has like, oh, this is how you handle it for each ecosystem. Yeah, this one. Uh, but it really doesn't think too much about it. I wonder if, if it's a bug in the lab. Okay, so sp oh, the spec says replace. You're supposed to replace when you canonicalize it. But they didn't say that you're supposed to deduplicate it. They yeah, didn't, but they should say that. As well. They should say that as well. <laughs> yeah. The dots. <laughs> yeah, because I was gonna say, like, I know, for example, um, in Rust, there's there's currently a debate about whether or not underscores or dashes should be the canonical representation of um, a, a package, and in fact, like trying to get folks just to uh, name it. And not every ecosystem does that either. Some ecosystems largely don't care, and like so, foo dash bar and foo underscore bar will just be different packages. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I I feel like this is this is one of the 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 things why I'm I'm also like interested in that whole like uh here's give us an identifier and then we'll figure out what it means later on because it's likely to change. <laughs> um yeah, because I think the alternative is the alternative is we say okay, that's 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 um Let's go for po po v two spec, and then try and get it right until we we don't, <laughs> and something in the ecosystem changes. Um. So actually, I think depth dev is doing the wrong thing here because they're not yeah, following yeah. the Perl spec for Python either. They're not changing all underscores to dashes when you query, query it. Well, I, I don't think that this one is is so. So this is not the 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 poll, the poll. Okay. Oh, you mean yeah? This is just like what? The... But still, like I it's, I imagine some arbitrary not. naming. Yeah. Yeah. I also wonder if the Perl library now, like all of these little details and it parses by ecosystem, or is it just a thin wrapper over a regular URI link library and that's it? I don't know. Um, I suspect not, but maybe. Uh... So I, I guess what's what's our next step, steps with this? Um, do you wanna like? I don't think we're gonna. This issue hasn't been fixed for six years. I don't think we're gonna fix it within the next few months. Um, is the idea for like? Well, I think that we should do what the spec says. Or even expand the attention of the spec where it's saying that like with the python one basically it's saying like you don't you don't like query pypi you canonicalize in a and everybody agrees to canonicalize python in the same way which is make it all lowercase and change all continuous strings of dashes underscores and dots to a single dash or something like that, which is what it should say, probably. <laughs> um, and that works. Like if if all people converting 
some kind of input to a Perl spec does, does the same canonicalization per our ecosystem, then they should match. And for Go, maybe it should be all lowercase. I, I think the trickiness in that is like, I, I I can see a world where the entry the the those changes introduced by PyPI kind of came after the Perl spec was was written. Yeah, I mean, like even so, you know, like Go has canonical case sensitivity based on like the repository, right? Like even Python has that as well. Like Django is a capital D, but this Perl spec. says it's a lowercase d like the, the you know and that's just how it is to make the pearls compatible like i think the spec is right there if you type pip install django with a lowercase d you get django with a capital d on your file system you know and so so python might as well be case sensitive because django has an official capitalization with a capital d So but we should I, be able to, we should, the query, the Perl for Django should be a lowercase d. so I'm kind of curious for for this, right? I like how do we wanna, hmm. like we are losing information. So if if we are presented with a Perl that has capital capital um d, right? Like if we convert it to lowercase case d, we kind of lose information. Uh, how do we? How do you want to saw that? Um, and I think Pam and I were talking about it in terms of like, okay, yeah, we're gonna have maybe you ingest like two package tries and then you do package equal. Um, but then kind of like now with this conversation, I'm thinking, okay, maybe like we can add a qualifier for something that has a cap to say like, oh yeah, with capitals and stuff like that. Oh, that's a qualifier, but I, I don't know if that's going to be even more confusing. But see, in Python, when a user has Django with the capital O in their requirements text, it works. And there's we're, there's nothing for us to save there. Like, we're not going to save Django with a capital O as a qualifier, because that's not even correct. Like, the only way to know what's correct would be to query PyPI and see, oh, the correct one is Django with capital D. Like, there's nothing to save. The only thing to save is the... proper Perl, which is all lowercase so that comparisons can always work. So you're saying for for Python they were all low case in the end. Like if we query like what well, no, but then we can't query that, right? We we need some way to look up I have this package, what is the actual like canonicalized canonicalized view of it? capitalization. Yeah, but maybe we don't care about that, right? We we care about the identifier being canonicalized. And that's what Yeah. I that's why I was asking about the It's, is the library itself smart enough to canonicalize based on an ecosystem requirements? Because I, if it's not, not, then it's just literally treating it I as wouldn't, a I would be surprised if it's not, it's in the spec. It says, if you see PyPI here, lowercase everything and change underscores to dashes. Like, why would it not do that? I hope it does. <laughs> but, uh, and if it but, doesn't, but, we can but, change it. Like they're happy to have us fix the library to be this, to properly represent the spec. Yeah, and also by the way, Christian, I think Christian Rebecca or something, um, mispronouncing his name. He he he's a maintainer, and I've been chatting with him. He says he's happy to kind of review our changes as well. I don't think so. Oh wait, maybe it is. Well, it's doing something. Pro probably not all of it, like the repeated stuff. But I, but I guess uh, if that's the case, then it, it's a like we need to we need to both ask them to update the spec to to match like that five oh eight, and also update implementation. And uh, I wonder if this is something that we really like in the medium term we can achieve, which is just practically making the Perl spec usable for all of these different ecosystems. Uh, that's like a scale. 
Sorry, what's your what's the proposal again? I, I missed so, the first part. my understanding, like my understanding of the situation, is we have two problems. One of them is the pearl spec doesn't fully like represent what the ecosystem is using to match identifiers. Like it is doing the uppercase, lowercase. It is doing the underscore hyphen, but it's not doing the like repeated hyphen thing, right? Now that's yeah. a problem with the spec. And I think for that, we need to say, hey, there's a bug in the spec. It doesn't match what the ecosystem is requiring. Then we need to also uh, ensure that this is propagated to the library so that it actually does the right sort of normalization. Uh, and I'm assuming that this is relatively manageable in terms of effort. And we need to repeat this in the ecosystems that are fun. Uh, I don't know how does this translate to like devs.dev not having this issue. Uh, but uh, I, I, I assume, yeah. So I guess the question is this, like, like you, you say it seems very much reachable in the, the short term. I feel like this is, this is not unless they are willing to change the post back. Well, so they, they labeled it as 1.0.x. And I would assume that this is a, like a patch version at best, which is like, hey, you missed this like stuff in the Python spec. For the Python case, uh, if they push back on that, then then yeah, we're we're in trouble. It's this is like very bad luck for for something that like it really shouldn't be more than a two line diff. Uh, I mean, it's weird because like it, it, I don't think it's uh when well, I think a patch version for for spec, I think like oh document do documentation changes or something and like this means like this is a code like the, the 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 tests and the code will will be different which is like you may break some tests at some point <laughs> well uh, yeah at the same time it's it's wrong right like it's a it's not yeah, yeah. being faithful to to the ecosystem that's supposedly representing um uh, I, I think we could test Fly, test fly that if you want. I, I can definitely ask Johan or Carlo or somebody to, to give it a try uh, and see how they react. Uh, I've been looking at the at the Go module like a specification, and uh, it's. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think that they at least should also update their spec to to reason whether they're case sensitive or not. Uh, I assume they are, but uh, like they're using network names as well. Like a module path is uh, starts with a network name, at least as far as I can tell, uh, which is a little bit confusing. So, I, I guess what we, we we do have to get the ecosystems involved with this, right? Because. Um... So I guess the difference between Python and Go is like in your Go mod file, you have to put the correct capitalization. Like even if they don't allow two packages to have the same name with different capitalization, they want you to put the correct, the canonical capitalization in your Go mod file or else it just won't, it won't work. That is the same for Python. Like if I, if I import, uh, say, Open Open MP, I think it's with a capital O and capital MP. If I import, yeah. So the language is, but the package names aren't. So you could have in your requirements text, whatever capitalization you want, and it'll just work. Is that right. based on I... what I'm reading? So, which is what the S bomb is built from usually. It's reading right. requirements so, text. So you're telling me that if I put on a Go mod something that's not capitalized properly, it's going to fail. In Go mod, yeah, I think it will fail. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. Is... It will. It will. It will. It will fail. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a big difference there. So that's actually, that makes me think the Perl spec should keep the capitalization for Go. <laughs> well, I, I am a little bit shocked. So I put a network name on it. <laughs> it goes to the network somewhere. Yeah. It lands on some like RFC uh, compliant library that essentially. Well, because it pulls the Go mod that it gets, and the Go mod the the. The package name and the Go mod has to match. It depends, I think, on who built it. I maybe because yeah. it goes well, to the Go proxy and then Go proxy is the one that resolves it. 
even if it's not go proxy it Sorry, goes to the it goes to the internet downloads the git repository opens up the go mod file reads the first line and that has to match um so I, I, I feel i feel like we are we are going down <laughs> to like some technical details which we but i don't think we have a, we have figured out a like uh i think on a high level what our plan is right like it's is this some, like how much effort do we want to put into like is this a, a problem that we have to like spend some time to to push it through do we have to like kind of create some type some type of like identifiers recurring meeting with a bunch of people uh and the perspec owners and try and drive that or is this something where we're like we're just gonna tell them about this problem hopefully they resolve it but we have a solution that will not depend on them resolving this um Look at our hands. Uh, I think half was first. Yeah, I just, I mean, you know, like I think we were talking about, like if the create a package equals, I don't think that's going to work because, right, the S bomb should be following the Perl spec, right, for example. So it should be lowercase, but it's not. So it depends on the tool, I guess. So based on what my, you know, based on the SIFT S bomb I was looking at, it was uppercase. But then that's against the Pearl spec, right? So it's like, so then like, how do I know if the, if I'm getting this from the S-bomb, for example, and I, then I don't know what should or should not be capital because everything should be lowercase technically, right? So well, like, it, it, it doesn't help me to do a package equals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think just on, on that end, right? Like if the answer here is, hey, um, just want to be really clear. Like if the answer is actually, yeah, 100%, they should all be lowercase, then SIFT is not doing the right thing and we should just reject pearls from SIFT. Or like rather work with SIFT just to kind of say, hey, look, you're 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 generating invalid uh pearls. Yeah, I think the weird thing is like we 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 kind of want that information. <laughs> it's just kind of strange. Well, but then then we should be pushing on the Perl spec to allow, you know, case sensitivity. Yeah, I, I, exactly. And that's, I think that's the question. It's like, can we, can we wrang, wrangle our way around the problem versus like, do we have to like get involved? Like how big is this? Is a... well, but, but, but I mean, I think j just to be clear, right? Like the, the, as the number of SBOM and other related Perl related tools expands, if everybody kind of does it their own way, <laughs> Then we're gonna just like run into a different flavor of this problem, like in a week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, NASA. I just wondered if it could be an async conversation in the uh, chat. I yeah, do I have some thoughts. I just don't want to, you know, dump them right here i i think like a conversation has to be had um i think the the in the guac channel i think i think we we do need i think the right there are some people that should be part of this conversation that are not part of the guac channel we should at least get them in uh as well at least like the golden folks i don't know whether philip philip is, is there as well but we should we should get them there um, but I'm thinking, and I don't know, Michael, is this like, is this something that we can bring to the open SSF and like get a working group on? Well, I, I mean, I think, um, it would be nice if we could find a few more folks who've, who are having similar sorts of issues so that we can go to the various parties involved, like SIFT like the Perl spec and just say, Hey, look, like there's lots of potential, like we don't want to come in there and obviously be like, this is the way that you shall do it. It's more like we're coming in with, we see this problem. Here's what we would like to see, but we're also like, it could go any of three or four different ways. It like the, the takeaway I'm getting from this entire conversation is it should be consistent, right? And currently it's not consistent either from a spec perspective a tool, an ecosystem perspective or a tool implementation perspective. Um, and 
at the end of the day, the three do need to be fairly like that's not to say that somebody's not going to make the spec wrong. But if if everybody does it a slightly different way and there's no consensus around here's the way you should do it. Um, and to be clear, I, I do think that in general, you should follow the spec because the spec is the, the, the canonical definition. And if there is something that you can't do in that spec, then go back to the spec and say, hey, how can we update it? Um, but I think anything else is we're just going to run into like, we're going to just keep running into issues. Um, and, 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 you know, like if it's not SIFT, like we, we work with SIFT to get that fixed and somebody else does something similar, like it needs, needs to be, um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, do you think this is worth something for us to write a post about for, to kind of like see how other people are also using um, having this issue like, i i think there's like a lot of information that's everywhere yeah um, i mean I, I i totally think this is a great blog that we can post out there just sort of highlighting the problem because usually doing that then you get the the conversation rolling i found um okay i would be interested in contributing to this blog um who who else wants to work on this on this blog? I can help also. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I think that'll be the first step, and then the next step will be kind of like um, sending this out to ecosystem friends. Um, maybe that's where Ben can also help out. Um, so I'm going to put my name, um, Pav Santiago. Yeah. Yeah. And what Santiago posted could just literally be the solution, right? Like, and say, Hey, everybody who is using, um, generating a pearl should case encode it with exclamation marks. I'm Boom. Copy done. This because I, 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 yeah. In case you lose it. Um, Sounds good. Um, we are almost out of time. I, I, I did notice you had some, you had a question on the GraphQL and then we talked about it. And then you, I think this may be something separate. Oh yeah, this is something separate, which is just, so I know we talked about the GraphQL and open API. I think it's it stems from a similar sort of problem, but like it's one that keeps coming up as folks are starting to poke around more and more with Guac. And then they reach out to me and say, hey, uh, I don't even know where to get started with the GraphQL, and there's like you know a two dozen files in our in a repo, um, or sorry, two dozen files in a directory, and it's just curious. Like they were asking if there's just better ways looking through this, if similar to you know once again like how Swagger you have that ability to clearly see that some of it's just not possible with GraphQL because of the way we've structured that. But but yeah, uh, Jeff. So you know I'm sure this is just an unfamiliarity with GraphQL from the people looking at it, but GraphQL by spec is self-documenting. It's got an introspection endpoint. Most clients have ways to dump the spec, not just the whole spec. So like we sh probably shouldn't be pointing people at the files in the repo and instead have like some help where we're pointing people to like more generic GraphQL stuff where they can do things like use tools to get the spec, like the playground, it pulls the spec. And so like when you type stuff that's not inherent to the spec and the queries, it gives you the red squiggles. Like that's how it does that. Um, so yeah, I think, I think I, of, that, that's what I'm saying is I think most yeah. people are just asking for that. Like, Hey, is there a way to, yes, yep. it is self-documenting, but there's yeah. a thing of like where to get. So there's two pieces. One is a, just yeah. sort of like, um, cause like, Looking at this, I pointed folks to this sort of thing as well. Um, okay, yeah. And then when you start to load in our entire thing, it's like, okay, but where do I get started, right? Like there's, yeah. there's, um, it, it's more of a, uh, less of a, is this possible? More of a, hey, with open API, that's very, very clear. I just kind of load this into a swagger thing and, and it gives me the, the output. Um, but can I do the same sort of thing here? Because uh, even with the, the playground that we have, um, like there's a couple of different, some of the playground stuff, just to be clear, I think that is, is, uh, I've seen a couple of the paid ones, which are really, really nice looking. Um, I wonder if there's something like that, that is free on the free end that we can point people to. Is there like a GraphQL, um, uh, 
Slack chat or something like there's community we could ask. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure there is. <laughs> yeah, I've tried to ask similar things in the Apollo community, and I found in most cases they just kind of point me to Apollo paid things, and I'm like, that's not what I was asking, but yeah. you know. Uh, cool. We are almost out of time. Um, I had a quick question on on that. Uh, are these like I I think one of the the questions is like, should we just be pointing people to the REST API then, or like are these people the people that want to create tools on 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 Quark? I feel like maybe at some point we should just not point people to GraphQL <laughs> unless it has like a huge ass warning sign that's like, oh yeah. Um, well, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, I think the thing is, is so there's two things. One is the, the vast majority of the way you interact with our, with, with Guac right now is via GraphQL, right? Almost all of our examples, almost everything is through GraphQL. So either we do need to say, hey, the higher level REST API and the CLI tools are the way to go. And if you're building something that is like, this is like super user mode, you go to this other route, which is kind of like, I would, you know, to use maybe a, anyway, we could, we could use a, a like a Kubernetes um, analogy, but of like, one is, you know, the API, the other is like a custom resource definition. I don't know. But like, we just need to, I think, be, um, make sure that like whatever functionality we're trying to kind of really expose as the, as the, the, the first thing that somebody sees, we just need to be very, very clear about it. Um, All right. I think we're out of time. We'll see everyone on Thursday. Yep. See ya. All right. Thank Later. you.